This is Access Ann Arbor. Hi, we're here with Laurel Fetterbush, my friend who wrote this book called Flat Earth Meets Tesla, a primer on paired inverted worlds cosmology. And I was really surprised that uh, Laurel wrote this book because I think of her as a harp player. And um, how, d how did um, harp playing kind of lead to uh, science? <laughs> Hello. I mean, a lot of people, I'll be upfront about, would say this is um, whatever crackpot science or pseudoscience. It's whatever. It's definitely not mainstream science. But um, I guess the harp is a weird instrument. I like unusual instruments and um, unusual ideas too. And um, I uh, just it's just um, speculation, mythology, just. Um, things that make you kind of wonder about, about things. And I, th I think that's related to music. Music is mysterious. And yeah. Yeah, and it's also complex. OK. Isn't it? Yeah. Com yeah. Music's very, can, some of the works that you do are very complex. Oh, yeah. And yeah. Um, a lot of times, do you find yourself having to simplify it down? Or? Yeah, actually, that's interesting. I often have to simplify like my harp parts. Sometimes orchestras give me parts that are too difficult and um, you know, too many notes to um, not writ either they're just not written well for the harp or even if maybe some harpists play it maybe I find it awkward so I have to either simplify it or adapt it and um, yeah so simplifying is and, and I, I think I'm I, I kind of like to simplify things in general like my brain can only focus on you know few things at a time, like, you know, maybe one or two things at a time sometimes, and sometimes if things are just overly big and complicated, like the plot of a movie, I, mm -hmm. I think, you know, this is just has too much stuff going on. It would be better if it were simpler. And yeah. So I guess I'm kind of a minimalist in that way. Well, yeah, I think you are. I When I was reading this, I, it seemed very, very sim um, the the ideas are extremely complicated, um, but there's an elegance um, oh, and the okay. simple elegance to, to what you've done here. Um, these are three basic, it's, it's pretty, it's, it's, although the ideas are very complex, this is a very small book. And it's got, um, you know, pretty, pretty big writing. But she seems to have been able to take these ideas and it's all, all complete. It has a lot of bibliography in the back that you can do more research. But the ideas come across. And that's what we want to talk about a little bit here, these ideas, um, because we could probably talk for two hours on this. I mean, it's, there's a lot here. Um, basically, you're talking about um, a completely different idea uh, to what we've all been brought up with. Right. The idea that um, the Earth is the way we've been taught it is. And Laurel has some very interesting ideas about what, what the Earth actually is. Um, would you care to elaborate a little bit? Uh, yeah, I, let's say um, some of the I the ideas aren't okay. I'll start off. I, um, the idea that the Earth is flat—that's not my original idea. That goes back um, thousands of years. Um, I would say thousands of years. Some you know, some people think that the Earth and the universe are millions or billions of years old, but you know, I'm, I'm saying. Um, at, at least thousands of years. We don't have evidence um, that it's older than that. And uh, it's flat, and that's the way we observe it to be. And I, I'm not the mm -hmm. one who thought of that. But once you, uh, once you believe that the, the Earth is flat, you would want to explain, well, how does the universe work? W um, what are the scientific principles? Um, what's the sun? What's the moon? Um, and this was my attempt of, at explaining what a flat Earth cosmos would look like. And um, one of the things in, in the modern age, you, there's the um, YouTube. You can get access to all kinds of unusual ideas on, through YouTube videos. Um, and this is how I got into all this. I, I was started watching I was um, wondering. sort of alternative um, astronomy ideas, like a lot of people are into what is 
Planet X or Planet Nibiru and just things like that. I, I guess I have a conspiracy streak, so um, uh -oh. the idea of <laughs> 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 yeah, that's get, got me in, um, into some, you know, the, there are all, all kinds of weird conspiracy ideas, but this one, um, you know, I just started looking into alternative cos cosmology ideas just for fun, and, and, and some of them started to make you wonder, well, is this true, is this not true? And one of them I came across um, some guy saying th the earth isn't spinning and um, it's not even moving. And But it wasn't like um, some sensationalist video. It was a guy with um, some physics training and he was making some real physics arguments why there's no evidence that the earth is moving. Or And um, so I watched it and, um, you know, he was very serious and said, like, um, Gases don't stick to li like if if you um if you're smoking a cigarette and you move the the cigarette smoke doesn't follow you like there's no reason why the gas would stick to a moving object so that was one of his arguments the other um, was it that the mass of objects would be significantly different at the equator from at the poles and um, it's interesting. It's interesting to think about yeah, right. and kind of get into their world. It's like um, kind of trippy. Yeah. So you're kind of attracted to yeah. trippy things. <laughs> Just things that sort of turn everything you've thought about. Yeah. Before it's fun, isn't it, to kind of oh, right. expand your mind and think, what if? Right, yeah. And, um, well, uh, I just want to be clear. You're not much of a conspiracy, a, a well, conspiracist. <laughs> you, you are attracted sort to of that. Am in, are you really? In some ways. Um, I guess years ago I got really into some conspiracy theory ab about um, the government um, tracking people and um, I, I kept do doing research to try to prove that and um, eventually I sort of came to the conclusion that the person who I was relying on for information was, you know, it was more likely that she was, that um, things weren't actually happening exactly the way she, she said they were, even though some of the information I came up with was kind of interesting. It, and I think people who get too caught up in conspiracy theories, um, you know, like me at times, <laughs> I, I don't think it's really good for your psyche to, you know, I mean, I'm sure that there are powerful people in government conspiring to do all kinds of things and not being honest, but w we, we basically have to just live our lives in spite of all of that. There's, you know, if there's mm -hmm. nothing you can do about it, you know, you shouldn't spend all of your energy trying to... Well, you can you know, blow the whistle. Right, yeah. <laughs> you <laughs> know, true. as much as you can. And I really like what you're doing mm -hmm. is exposing these ideas because, mm -hmm. they're and, and really what you've done too, we haven't really got into what, what it is you're actually right, yeah. doing, but um, maybe we can talk about that later. Okay. I, uh, we probably should talk about actually what it is that you're proposing here. Okay. So anyway, th there are all kinds of YouTube videos. So like, anyway, once I watched this guy's video, he wasn't into the flat earth idea, but he was a, was a geocentrist. That means the idea that the earth is at the center of the universe. So there are a lot of people who are geocentrists, but they don't believe the earth is flat. They just believe that the earth is round and it's at the center of the universe. And um, I think there's some new movie out called The Principle. I don't know if it's in, fil in theaters or on video or what, but this guy, Robert Sungenis, made this mo movie with um, evidence that the, the Earth is at the center of the universe. And, um, but anyway, from watching, from geocentricity, I, I got into other ideas in the YouTube videos. There's this one guy who had this interesting theory that the Earth is concave, uh, like that that it's, r it, it's round, but we're actually inside it, or the whole cosmos is inside of it, and um, you know, the, the land where, or the earth we're on sort of moves um, up like, like that. You know, it's sort of like we're on the inside of a ball, and the sun and the stars and everything would be at the center. And um, so I, I got kind of into his ideas for a while. <laughs> and, um, but I guess I, I didn't stick with that. The flatter thing just s seemed to make more, more sense. There, there are a whole lot of good videos that would um, give arguments for you know why why the Earth um, why, why they think the Earth is flat. For one thing, um, you can see a lot farther than you should be able to see if the Earth were um, sloping away from you. It would be sloping away like um, six inches every mile, and and the Earth actually the the theory they of the globe is that the Earth is has like a 
8,000 mile diameter and um, 25,000 mile circumference. So it's not like an infinitely big ball. You know, it's at some level, um, you know, we should be able to see the curve of the Earth. You, you know, but there's actually, you know, if the, you climb the highest mountain, you go up in an airplane, there's no no place from which we see any evidence that, you know, we, we can't see the curve of the Earth. The only evidence for the globe theory is from um, like NASA pictures that we see on TV. And, you know, if the only evidence is something on our television screen, I think that's kind of suspect, you know, like, so how did the people come up with the idea before NASA? Like, the, and, um, oh, that was something that was kind of, um, I did some research into where, where did the idea of the round Earth came from. And it's not just, it's part of a bigger thing. It's not just that the Earth is round. It's part of a whole thought system that actually goes back thousands of years. It's um, the idea that the Earth, um, it, it goes back to ancient sun worship in um, India and Persia. The idea that there's a, a sun, that the, the sun is, is their, was their main god, and the idea that the sun is at the center. And they had some versions of ancient Indian mysticism had this idea that the sun that we see is actually a reflection of another sun, like the sun, mm -hmm. greater sun being God. And we see, uh, and the sun we see is a reflection of God. And um, huh. so, so yeah, sun like worship, that. and that's like one of the earliest, earliest religions yes. that came out. And um, it's, it, it kind of makes you wonder, well, just because we're more advanced, advanced according to what? Right. You know, maybe they knew. Yeah. <laughs> maybe they, well. they really got it, you know, and, and so in some ways, you know, and then as you, as you go along, um, you know, it's like telephone. Mm -hmm. You know, the information sort of gets, right. uh, you know, people have different agendas, and then next thing you know, we've got this globe, and it's, yeah. you know, <laughs> spinning, and, you know, it's just really interesting to see how information um, becomes sort of um, the thing. Yeah. So um, anyway, this is a, a picture of kind of an idea of, of what you're talking about. Two flat earths together with um, mm -hmm. um, with an under okay. people underneath <laughs> that we don't even know about. We'll never okay, see, um, or maybe someday we will. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. My idea is that um, yeah, the Earth is flat, and um, yeah, there are these two flat earths paired together. And um, we have a sun and a moon, and they have a sun and a moon. They're upside down from our point of view. And um, yeah, so, so that's. And there's, there's um, something holding, talking. This sun talks to this moon uh, I as far as like a, a, a wave? Or what, yeah. what, what holds um, these things together? Is this the right picture? Okay. Or maybe we should use a different picture for that one. Okay, yeah. So this sun is a transmitter. It transmits um, scalar waves to this moon. This moon is a receiver. And this sun tr is also a transmitter. It transmits scalar waves to that moon. Scalar, and that's where Tesla comes in. Right. He's the one who invented or who discovered scalar waves. Yeah, it's a theoretical thing, and um, you know, again, this is sort of fringe science. Mainstream science doesn't go along with te a lot of Tesla's ideas, but a lot of people think he was, you know, really brilliant and really did have some great ideas about um, free energy, among other things. So yeah, um, well, they named a car after him. Can't be that. <laughs> oh yeah, it must be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But what um, I'm a very technical person, okay. and I I'm just having trouble here with the two. Um, can you explain to me why is the sun drawn over on the other side? I think I actually brought the wrong picture. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I think I. I um, okay, but that's kind of the idea: is that there's yeah. people on this side and people yeah. on that side. Okay, because right. I'm just trying to wrap my mind around okay, this. Yeah. Very complicated oh, stuff these, here. Oh, and the moon has holes in it. Like yeah. Like the holes. Um, where they come enable from? it to receive the the scalar waves. Was like our telephone receiver has, you know, you, you talk into a telephone. There it are holes. Kind of looks like in a it. telephone yeah, receiver. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So um, the. Was that just accidental? Were the um, the craters are there. The, the holes that are in the moon are from craters, right? Well, this is the thing. The scientific ideas we're taught is sort of that the world, the universe came to existence kind of by accident, just by happenstance. Mm -hmm. and it just worked out beautifully, but that's just kind of an accident. But um, I don't think there's any reason to, to believe that. Um, 
I, I'm not actually like a biblical creationist. I don't believe every word of the Bible is true. I just happen to think that the Bible is closer to reality on these scientific matters than modern science is. Um, for one thing, it's, you know, these are kind of simpler ideas. I, I tend to think that, well, there's a, a principle, was it Occam's razor, that the simpler an idea is, the more likely it is to be true. I mean, that, again, that's a simplistic version of, you know, that's <laughs> I, however he stated mm -hmm. it. But, um, the, so the, the Bible's, the literal Bible ideas are simpler than modern science, and um, there's no reason to believe that it has to be more complicated than that in a lot of instances. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, the earth is flat, it looks flat, it behaves like it's flat, and um, so there's no reason to assume that it isn't flat unless there's someone can come up with some really good reason to believe that, and there actually isn't any good reason to believe that it's not flat. So yeah. I mean, I've been talking about it for it being flat. People think it's a backwards idea because <laughs> they thought of it first. But like, um, I guess I, I'm not sure if I quite finished what I was saying about the Earth being round, that, that that's actually an ancient idea. So we think of the flat Earth as being like really retro, like we, you know, thousands of years ago, but the idea of it being round is, that comes from the idea that the sun is the central god and the Earth is just one of the many planets going around the sun, like because the sun has to be at the center, that's their god, and we're just, you know, little servants of the god. So, um, and, it, and also, like, it comes from ancient drug use, too, I think, like the, the, the people who, who had this theory also believed that there were creatures roaming around on the sun and the moon, and I tend to think that was from, from drug use, and the people who wrote the ancient Indian, um, the Rig Veda, their ancient, um, holy books, th they were inspired um, in part by the drug Soma, and we don't actually know what Soma was, but um, I hope that's it could have been a hallucinogenic drug of some kind. I so. hope that's not blasphemous to <laughs> say it came from drugs. <laughs> Maybe not. Well, some of their... I yeah, um, that's just what they did. Yeah, it was, uh, and the ancient Greeks um, mm -hmm. also t took drugs, and that, that's a documented fact, but it's, you know, I don't think that's the necessarily the entire inspiration, just mm -hmm. that, that was one of the things that they did. And, mm -hmm. um, and, and I, th you know, I think it was a holy book. There are a lot, of, there's a lot to be gained from these, those ancient texts. It's holy the way that, th you know, the Bible's holy too. So, um, you know, it's just one of the ancient texts, but you, people tend not to look to the Bible for great science. And, you know, if they're, yeah. if they're not willing to look to the Bible for science, I don't see why they should be looking to, you know, ancient Indian religious texts for science, which is Good basically point. Good yeah. point. And it's not just in, I guess, ancient Persia was at the time, they were, they had that, I, um, Zoroastrianism was a big religion that was um, sun worship also, or it had a sun worshiping element to it. And so that, those were the big ideas. That's um, sort of where idea c came from of the earth mm -hmm. being something that had to revolve around the sun. Yes. Well, um, I just think these ideas mm. are fascinating. Okay, oh yeah, I was also going to mention the, the idea that things are just accidental. Um, you know, I think that the, the sun and the moons, um, those, they have a function. The, the sun has a specific function and the moon has a specific function. And um, there's no reason to assume that they're just random rocks or balls of gas or things like that. And um, that, uh, you know, it's like your body. Your body has a heart and a liver and each one of those performs a specific function. And, um, you know, I think it's the same with the sun and the moon. Th so, you know, we've, uh, so, okay. Anyway, so the sun is a transmitter, the su two suns are transmitters, the two moons are receivers, and the, the two flat earths are receivers, or I'm, I'm sorry, they're, um, they're resonators, they, they're resonators. So according to the, this idea of how to produce scalar waves, you need a transmitter, a receiver, and a resonator. And um, so th they, so, th um, each one of these, um, like the, these are scalar waves. The scalar waveform is an idea that Tesla came up with. Scalar waves can go through any object, um, doesn't matter how thick, um, the, and they can go backwards and forwards in time. It, it, they're kind of um, magi seemingly magical, but, but the, you know, they have all kinds of interesting properties. That's was it called longitudinal waves is another name for it. Um, and I'm not a physicist, so I'll get in trouble if I try to say too much about it, but these are the, um, you know, other people can look up what a scalar wave is or what a longitudinal wave is. It has um, 
it has magnitude, but it doesn't have direction. So, um, and ex exists in the in the vacuum um, outside of the material world, but mm -hmm. it can create energy mm -hmm. that exists in the material world. So you've put you've put these ideas together really mm -hmm. <coughs> in a way that no one else has put them together before. All of these ideas. That's what I think is so brilliant. And um, whether or not it's true, we don't, you know. W right. But I think we could. <laughs> yeah, I'm open to the f to the idea that might not be true, but this is my attempt to explain yes. some of the things. Yes. And w how else to find out if it's true or not right. <laughs> by putting it out there? Right. Yeah. And, um, <coughs> and that's one thing I like. Like I was saying, the flat Earth idea—that's not at all my mm -hmm. original idea. But the idea of um, there. Well, one of the things people say, well, if the Earth is flat, what's underneath it? So this is my idea of what's underneath it. And, and I think no one else, as far as I know, has come up with the idea of the sun transmitting to, to a moon on the other side of the Earth and, you know, and them having a sun that transmits to our moon. That's totally um, Where my did original you come up idea. With that? Um, did well, looking up, up the idea of, of the, well, again, my, I like in, um, unusual ideas and mm -hmm. I guess all of my looking into some of these alternate science things, I, I came to tes Tesla's theories, and they just seem to fit together so beautifully as far yeah, as I was concerned. Yeah. So okay, this is the n next picture. So anyway, there are stars too, and um, my idea of what the stars are, these two, um, these are stationary waves, like the scalar waves, um, it forms like a sort of just a s standing wave like that, and they cross each other. And when, and according to the, the, the Tesla's theories, um, when they cross, they would create sort of an explosion, or um, and it would lead to a, a shell, like a, a hard, impenetrable shell, like a big bubble on the outside. Is and, that what's um, called a Tesla shield? Yeah, I don't think Tesla himself called it that, but mm. was it Tom Beard, and he's another guy who was into the scalar waves. Um, you know, there are a lot of people who are sort of disciples of Tesla or, or they took Tesla's ideas mm -hmm. further or studied them more. And, um, He's military, right? Yeah. Mili yeah, so that's right, yeah. Mm -hmm. But anyway, the, so my idea of what the stars are is that th there are luminous points on these um, bubbles. So the, they're sort of like concentric bubbles that would um, move um, probably independently of each other. So, in, you know, the stars are moving, th like th those are points of light on, th on these bubbles. That they're not are big. Formed by the no, Big, they're no. not gas gaseous <laughs> things that have other planets running around. Oh, or well, I mean, they're they're just small. Like all of this is like an unbelievably small. By mo like we're used to thinking of this vast, enormous universe, oh, yeah. and that's another thing that comes to us from um, the ancient Indian. Or, or well, the Ind Indians pioneered math. So like they were the you know went to advanced mathematics. I think ancient Babylon had um, you know some advanced geometry too. That um, Pythagoras. Uh, People say he stole a lot of his theorems from ancient Babylon, but but anyway, ancient Indian mathematicians go back, you know, way before, maybe earlier than than almost anyone else, anyway, or maybe than anyone else. But they, I th I think, because they were so advanced in their math, they they loved these really huge numbers. So um, th they came up with the, the idea of billions and tri I mean, trillions, or you know, I th and um, you know, they they talked about the the universe and the earth being you know millions or billions or trillions of years old they, they talked about that way back then and i think that's just because they loved numbers so much and um, they also thought that the indian culture the indian civilization went back millions of years so um, you know i don't think even you know modern scientists wouldn't agree with them about that but you know that that but that's the origin of our ideas about the universe and also um also, a lot of ideas about evolution um, that's derived from their ideas about reincarnation and um, like Pythagoras, who um, we get a lot of our scientific ideas from. He was also into reincarnation, and I think he, you know he he reported at least like in the ancient world there were pe people traveled and there were people traveled from the east through Turkey and the ancient Greek philosophers hooked up with them or the ancient Greek philosophers might have traveled. So anyway, these ideas moved to ancient Greece. So the Greeks were influenced by the ideas from India and Persia. And um, so that's where, like modern science was derived from things that weren't scientific. Um, mm -hmm. So that, that's one thing I, I don't think 
people assume that because scientists have tended to believe something that it must be scientific, but that's not true. Like science was, I'm talking about the idea of evolution, science evolved from something else, but what it evolved from was actually not science. It evolved from this some of these ancient um, mystical ideas. And so there are good, th we developed the scientific method, which is um, a very wonderful um, thing that can help us understand our universe, but scientists often have not looked at the origins of some of their ideas th to see where they came from. So they just, along with the good things about science, they sort of um, adopted some things. They haven't examined all of their own ideas critically enough, I think. Yeah. Well, that's um, um, pretty, uh, pretty good point, you know, <laughs> that uh, I think it's a good point. Now, um, so y you've come up with that idea of the scalar waves coming together. Yeah, or I just want to say, yeah, my book's available at the library. In okay. Case yeah, you can always, if, you, if you're interested in this, if right. this has piqued your interest, right. um, it's at the Ann Arbor Library, mm -hmm. um, the book. It's very, very quick read, um, but it's, there's a lot to it, and there's a lot of, um, she didn't just, you know, <laughs> she's not just coming up with this. Uh, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of different sites, sightings, right, um, yeah. so references. She's got yeah. it all written down, all <laughs> where she came up with these ideas and put them together so eloquently. Right. Yeah, the book doesn't have pictures because it would no. have been more expensive for me. Right. To but <laughs> to it has a really nice cover. It's very attractive. Well, thank you. And uh, I think it's important to, mm. to question, you know, just mm. because people oh. have always said something. Oh, just another thing mm -hmm. I was going to say about science. Um, our astronomy was actually interchangeable with astrology for most of history. So like you think of those as totally different now. But uh, throughout most of history, science, our, our astrology and astronomy were actually the same thing. And it's only recently that they diverged. So um, this and, and um, people like Sir Isaac Newton um, were into all kinds of things like alchemy and astrology that now we would not consider science. So if we're willing to d dispute some of their ideas about those things, I think we should be willing to also dispute their ideas about the cosmos. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, we don't know. Right. I mean, <laughs> it's, it's worth delving into. I right. mean, these ideas are really, really good. Um, gosh, I don't know what else. Have we, showed all, have we shown all of the pictures? Yeah. OK, yeah. so they've seen all of that <laughs> since we didn't have them in the book. So. Right, yeah. So, yeah, so anyway, just be willing to, um, maybe just being willing to question science. And um, we said, you know, science is actually, a lot of the ideas that we take unquestioningly, it's just because, you know, maybe we've seen them on our television or, s you know, someone with a degree from an important university right. comes to us with a particular idea. And we're such visual people. Right, when yeah. we see it, it's like, oh, that's the way it is. Right. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> So it's, it's very interesting. I, I could actually talk more about this, but I don't want to get into too much because we're almost, we're ready to wrap up here. <laughs> but um, yeah, I just want to- Thank you so much, Anna. I really oh, you're welcome. You no, this is a, a good stuff to, to, get, uh, to get out there. And, mm -hmm. um, <coughs> and uh, I just think it's fun to think about this. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And so like even, if you, you know, even if you think this is whatever, I'm, Mm -hmm. Think of it as an entertaining science fiction idea, if nothing mm -hmm. else. But I think there's some. I think you're onto something, Laurel. Okay, I really I do. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, thank you so much. Um, I think we're done here, but uh, <coughs> it's been a really good, uh, good little talk here. Okay, thank so. you. I think